and away we go. Hey guys, welcome back. Welcome back to episode 7. Imagine that, 7 episodes of Live from the Casa. Um, we were going to have uh, a little bit full of a show today, but we had one person that had to, that just, his exact me, a, a text was, there's no way this is going to happen, my apologies, can we make it another time? So we won't have Rick from Monster Bass, but we will have Kyle Welcher on the water fishing. He's going to try to do this live while he's, I don't know if he's pre-fishing, I don't know what he's doing, but we'll have Kyle on, and Kyle is a fantastic young angler, uh, YouTuber, poker player, I mean, just one of the good dudes. I had so much fun with him in in at the St. John, so I can't wait to talk to him here in a little bit, uh, so it'll be fun to talk to him. I'm hoping that our, uh, our, our good buddy Mike is can do a little talk with us because I think there was something, there's one topic I think I want to get Mike's opinion on, the the super tournaments with Major League Fishing and FLW as the FedEx man goes by. Steve, by the way, I don't know if everyone can notice right there, I changed Casa to House, or House, Libre Von der House, that's my German accent, Um, so, um, and, and you know what I did today? In because of this, I had German pretzels for lunch. Couldn't make a schnitzel, but I made German German pretzels. Anyway, we'll call Mike right now. Oh my gosh! Hold on. Listen to this. The we are. Ste- I'm telling you, we are stepping up the game on the live from the Casa show. We have our own jingle. I'm not joking. Listen to this. Live from the casa. Forget popcorn, get the salsa. No need for shoes, we got fishing news. Interviews and reviews. Forget the drama, we're live from the casa. Shut your mouth! Listen to it again! No need for shoes, we got fishing news, interviews, and reviews. reviews. Forget the drama, we're live on the casa. How do you like them apples? We have our own jingle. And let me just say right now, it is going to stick in your head. So, I'm making my ringtone, you're right. Hell yeah, hell to the yeah. Thank you. I'm glad you loved it. Okay. Sauerkraut. Uh, Okay, I'm going to do a quick commercial, even though I don't have that up over here. Um, But during that time, hey, Matt, let me just say hello to everyone. Uh, Joe, Matt, Robert, Jeff, Jimmy, Mark, uh, Eric, Steve, Hammer, everybody, hello. Thank you for being part of another Live from the Casa, Episode 7. Imagine that, 7 of these things. Okay, so while I try to see if Mike's available, because if not, I'll just talk to you about what's going on. Uh, I'm going to run a little Tackle Ups commercial, so we'll be back in one second. This is Jim. Jim loves fishing, boating, anything to do with time on the water. Whether on the flats with his buddies, cruising around with the family, or an early morning solo session on his kayak or paddleboard, his time on the water is important and what he looks forward to after a long week of work. But no matter what boat he is on, there never seems to be a good way to keep the gear he needs organized, secure, and easy to get to in a safe place. Until one day, he found out about Tackle webs. With tackle webs, Jim can easily add durable, accessible storage to any of his vessels wherever he needs his stuff. Now, Jim enjoys stress free days on the water no matter how much stuff his friends and family brings. Find out how tackle webs can help you at tacklewebs.com. Well, I couldn't get a hold of Mike. So if you missed the news from this week before I call Kyle, uh, FLW, some of the Major League Fishing guys are going to fish what they're calling super tournaments 
for FLW, including one on Chickamauga and other things. 53 of the Major League Fishermen Anglers are going to join um, three of the FLW tournaments to make Super 1. So all the FLW guys, FLW Pro Circuit guys, are now going to compete for what they're calling the Super Tournament. Um some of the notables that won't be included in it is Kevin Van Dam, Ott Defoe, and there's a bunch of them that really aren't going. There's other ones like Edwin Evers. Uh, I didn't see Jason Christie on there either. So there's a lot of great anglers that are going to com be coming in into or joining FLW and making these super tournaments. Um, but these guys also, for the first time in a year and a half, have to pay a an in entry fee. But, hold on. Here's some of the things I I find a little odd about the whole thing. First, they're not going to do MLF rules. They're going to have to go back to fishing five fish, five biggest fish, wade in, do the whole weigh-in thing, come across the stage, do all that stuff that they haven't done in a year. And my th my thoughts are, I think this is actually good. Oh, hold on. Mike's coming out, calling in. We'll get Mike in here. Hey, are you there? I can see you. I can't hear you. Hello? No. Oh, I can hear you. How are you, man? Hello. Hello! Hey. I can hear you. There's our boy, T Cat Mike, from Tackle Webs. Hi, man. Man, this thing's dragging today, my internet. Oh, is it? Two Scott videos. There we go. How are you? Hey, how are you? I was talking about... Look at how I'm looking like alfalfa. What the hell? That's where I'm at. <laughs> yeah. I have been able to get trimmed up. Oh, I got trimmed the up. last man. haircut was my wife gave me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sonia wanted to do that. I said no. 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 I was talking about these super tournaments that FLW and Major League Fishing were going to do. Can you, you can't hear me? Yes. Yes. Did you hear did you did you hear about this? <laughs> 53 anglers from Major League Fishing are going to go fish this super tournament for FLW and and um, it's, I think it's going to be kind of weird because these guys are going to be going back to having to fish for five fish instead of as many fish as they can catch. Don't you think, do you think there's going to be any overlap or any issues uh, before these guys going back? Or do you think it's just going to be normal? Nah, these guys are pros. They're not going to have any problems. They're going to enjoy it. Yeah. To be honest. Yeah. They're going to have people rooting for them and, and showing up at the weigh-ins. You're going to have, uh, yeah, they're going to get back to the roots and be like, yeah, man, this is fun. Uh, I'll, hold on. Someone hit hand sanitizer. Let me hit hand sanitizer. Um, yeah, I, I, I've i been trying to, I've been thinking about because not everybody is, is going. Like Kevin Van Dam isn't going to be in there, but our boy Edwin Evers is going to be there. So that's great because that promotes our tackle webs. Yeah, that'll be helpful. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. As long uh, as he does well. Yes. Well, well, that was the other thing. What happens if 53 of these guys come up and like 10 or 12, or let's say in the top 10, eight of the top 10 are FLW guys? Where does that pit Major League Fishing? I don't know if it affects it, does it? I mean, most of these guys have always been big time guys anyways. Everybody has bad tournaments and the FLW guys have been fit format. But the FLW guys aren't, you know, it's not that major of a drop, I don't believe. No, no. I, mean, I You got guys like John Cog. I mean, there's a lot of studs. Oh, yeah, for sure. Big time bass fishermen in the FLW But wouldn't it make a know, great FLW tournament? Wouldn't it make a great story for the FLW guys to just crush it? I the mean, really. Good if it, it depends who's writing it, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, It'd be hard to get somebody to actually take the. Have the we'll be the only ones. Let's be honest. Yeah, just like when Major League Fishing was leaving the bass, we were the only ones to be honest about things. Yeah, I mean, there's uh, everybody I, has some kind of vested interest in these things, and they're like, they yeah, feel like oh, I shouldn't affect the bass. You know, I shouldn't talk bad about bass, or I shouldn't talk bad about management bass, or M Major League Fishing, or any of that stuff. And uh, not many people were at no. that time. No, I mean, we caught, I caught grief from it. You know, you you were there when Dave Mercer tried to choke me to death. <laughs> a lot of people caught grief for it. Yeah. I mean, a lot of us, you know, a lot of people gave us grief for it. But it's not that it was, it, was, it wasn't unfactual. No. I mean, when you're talking you know, truthful. Yeah. 
And, you know, there were problems with both those entities. So we'll see. Yeah. I, we'll make, uh, hey, if it happens, we're going to. We're gonna blast it. Yeah, I, I gotta be honest. I'm looking for. I actually think we should be covering Chickamauga of the first one uh, because I have a place. We have a house to stay at. I know we have a, we have more than one house to stay at. We have f- several friends that live right there on Chickamauga that would be more than more than excited to have us up there. More than excited to come up there and cover it. I'm not joking. You and me? Yeah, I'm not joking. Uh. I think I, I think it, I think it's one of those that we gotta I, I we gotta look at and and try to pl- maybe plan because I, if FLW comes out and, and kills it I think it'll be awesome. Not to mention you know Ott won't be there. Ott should be a, that's his home lake, so that's great. Last time they were out there, um, I think it was uh, Aaron Martin's was the the winner or something like that. So he won't be out there, but you got like Andy Montgomery, who's like the FLW God. He's the greatest of all time for FLW. He'll be back there and uh, he's wonderful up there. But also my boy, John Murray, who I went fishing up there at Chickamauga over the winter with major league fishing is going to be in it. So, you know, Wesley Strader, there's going to be a lot of good, good anglers that are going to be in it, but I'm, I gotta be honest. I want to see John Cox go up there from FLW and just rip them new butts. <laughs> I'm not joking. <laughs> I just want to see John Cox tear some asses up and just go, well, this is why you should have had me on Major League Fishing, bitches. <laughs> I mean, I'm looking. That would be good, man. It would be good. So, so you're an FLW. T- you're on Team Homer FLW. <laughs> Steve Chapman's on the FLW side. Of- I'm the you're Homer. You're going to sit on the field. <laughs> yeah. What side field are you sitting on uh, sit the FLW side? Well, I mean. Wait, wait. At least the FLW guys are used to us kind of calling on them and, and talking to them. We call the Major League Fishing guys, and they don't they don't know they don't even remember how to do interviews anymore. They're just lost. I mean, it's it's like they they go a year and a half without having any any media following, and the next thing you know, they don't they don't know what the media is. All they worry about is the media with MLF. I'm pissed off about it. I'm sick of it. Uh. So yeah, I'm rooting. For, I'm rooting for an FLW just complete annihilation. I want them to win everything. Sweep. Yes, complete sweep. Sweep it up. <laughs> I'm bringing a broom with me when I go to Chickamauga. <laughs> like, like Jameis Winston, yeah. when they were chasing him yeah. around the pro the pro thing. <laughs> so well, it, it'll be fun oh. to see what's what's happening. Uh, I, let me write. Hey, the, we're getting back into tournaments. You oh, know what? And that's. A good thing, man. That's exciting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I, I think it's it was a, something to talk about. Yeah, well, I think Major League Fishing has done a great job of of putting on like something almost every day until here recently. And then they've just completely dropped off here recently. But uh, I know the, everyone's excited about bass getting back into it, and you know, bass having a full a full tournament schedule. I really love. I'm disappointed that Major League Fishing only has like two more tournaments for the rest of the year. Um, you and know, how about a heavy? How about a heavy hitters tournament in July in Florida? Yeah. Uh, I, in all honesty, what are your thoughts on that? I know we have we have other work we have. I mean, to I'm do. not a bass bass fisherman, <laughs> but in July is hot, super hot. hot. Hot is and I don't mean that bite is hot. I mean the weather's hot. <laughs> yeah, swamp and ass hot. <laughs> like even in 800, 1200 feet of water, if you don't get on dolphin early enough. Yes, and they'll be out there because it gets hot. And they'll be out there. Uh, they'll be out there for. I mean, the, if you win your day with the biggest fish, it's a hundred grand. So you know those guys are beginning. They're not. They're not going to be giving up on little things. They're going to be going all out for that big fish. Got to get it. Yeah. And those ditch pickles are going to be real low, yeah. hanging in the shade. Yeah, if we don't get some rain here soon, they're screwed. They're going to be going fishing in a pool. An alligator and alligator holes. Yeah. Okay, well, I had someone ask real real oh, fast. Oh, my goodness. Everything's it reminds go- me. Go ahead. It reminds me of a story, though. Yeah. We fished a Wahoo tournament in Alamorada at Holiday Owl, and we didn't even pull back into the thing. We caught a small Wahoo. It was just legal. It was probably like, I don't know, 12 pounds. <laughs> Tiny. We stuck it in the cooler and drove, and we were gonna check out the weigh-in on the way back home. 
We drove, we drove in there, and the board was completely empty. <laughs> Nobody weighed in a while. <laughs> so you did you weigh it in? My buddy Pat, we're looking at each other with a drink in our hand. We're like, it's about time we must weigh this thing. Ran back to the truck, pulled this little wahoo out, put it in my pocket. We <laughs> <laughs> ran back. Put it in your oh, pocket. We ran back, and we took it, and we took it up, and uh, there was a guy. Anyways, he was a waymaster. Named Tony at the time, and uh, man, sure enough, we were the only one, only team to weigh in Oahu. And the guy was literally his hand was shaking, handing over the check to us. <laughs> and it was like a like a five six thousand dollar purse. Man. Shut so, up! It was a, so can you imagine like <laughs> big fish? Yeah, here's that. Fish here's that one point one point six pounds. Here you go. I think it's going to be tough, to be honest. I think they're going to have a tough time down here. I bet you like a 5-6 will probably win because it, it, it'll be – well, you want to know – in all honesty, you want to know who probably do real well? Shaw will do real well down here. So will Bobby Lane will do probably pretty well. So there will be a few guys. The Florida guys probably will do decent, but there will be some guys that just completely suck it up and blank. Uh, so, okay, quick question before I call Kyle Welcher. How is the how is the boat running? That's what people have been asking. Any updates on the boat? We are doing some prep work. It's running good. Yeah, it's running well, I guess. I've been doing uh, you know homeschooling, and so I should use that proper. Yeah, my teacher terms. <laughs> running well. Um, we're uh, I'm doing. We've got some inventing. We're trying to put a bow mount Ultera on the stern of the boat and see how it runs. So I'm going to do a bunch of punch holes. We're doing a bunch of pre-things that we're going to do, we'll record it, before I go and get it refiberglass. Because if I mess up or I don't want it and I got a hole, in it, I want to have them refiberglass my mistakes when I get it done all in one time. I don't want to have to go back and yeah. patch up things. So we've been filming some of that stuff on how to install Yoterra. We'll be putting in poles on batteries, how to put the optimal batteries together up and so forth but it's been running well you know we've gotten some, we took some shots on it uh we did some sh shoots and yep um yeah and i can't wait to get it get it real in here sh shortly now that you know they lifted the ban on us and we can actually be together yeah less than six feet with people yeah and we can get in doing some filming we can and do uh, our whole reaching out to some people we can all hold hands yeah. finally again <laughs> um, yeah <laughs> Okay, I have Kyle Welcher that's waiting for me. Thank you, dude. Good luck, man. Yes. Uh, Let's go out. We got to try those baits. Oh, yeah. D oh, yes. Yes, we do. You'll see. Uh, next week. Yes, let's do it. We need to try to make a day. Go run some reds and trout next week. Yeah, for and sure. And we'll try the trolling motor. Awesome. Okay. Everybody have a good memorial. Weekend. Yes. Awesome, dude. Thank you, man. I'll talk to you soon. Later, see brother. Ya. Later. Okay, that was Cat Mike as I bring myself in and can't bring myself out. Okay, so I'm going to call Kyle. So this, while you wait on the, I'm going to do the Costa sunglasses and I'm going to call Kyle at the same time. So I'll see you in a few seconds. No, no, you're fine. We're live now. <laughs> How are you? Shut your mouth! Shut your <laughs> mouth! You yeah. did not just do that! We just yeah, talked! Dude, how big is that fish? It's probably a six-pounder. Where are you fishing? I'm fishing on Lake West Point in Georgia. We've been out here like 10 minutes, and I just caught this six. I actually sight fishing, and we caught another two and a half. So I'll give, I'll give everybody a little view of me turning her loose. Look at that. This is how we do it. Look at that big sucker. Dude, what did you catch it on? Topwater frog, dude. Topwater frog. My, my favorite way to catch it to you. I just uh, I hooked her on a 7-foot-6 rod and 65-pound braid, so she's still getting her bearings a little bit. <laughs> uh, I just caught her like two or three minutes ago. Like, it was insane. Nice. That, that's, what, that's what you get when you got Kyle Welcher on the podcast. That, that, yep. that is what you get. How are you, man? Everybody, If you do, uh, it, this is Kyle Welcher. 
elite angler, YouTuber, great YouTube channel. Uh, I met him at the – we met at the St. John's, didn't we? Yeah. I St. John's after, uh, after, I think, day one and day two, maybe. Yes. I have a story I needed to tell you. I couldn't tell you after while we were there. But – so do you remember – so it was day two you caught that 10-pounder. Right, yep. So – so John Cox and I are very close friends. So he he goes, he's he's like waving me over, like Chapman, come here, come here. I go over to his boat. He he yanks out like a nine six or nine seven. I'm like, oh my gosh, you've got the biggest fish of the tournament. This is great news. This is great news. So then he goes up to the weigh-in and you're exactly in front of him. Right. So in the middle of him, I don't remember, you know if you remember, he looks down at his phone and he texts me. He goes, the dude in front of me has a bigger fish than me. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> shut your mouth. Well, I, I walk John, over there and then you get up and get all this praise. And then John brings up his and his looks tiny compared to yours. It was the best thing ever. Well, John's a good dude. And, you know, he always catches 10 pounders. So just let me have it one time, man. Just let me. Just let me have it one time and enjoy it. <laughs> that was an awesome tournament for you, to be honest. That was first elite tournament. What was your thoughts? So you made it to the final day. What? How did the? What were you thinking after that? That. So that tournament was one that it, it kind of fit my style because the, the the way that I like to fish, I like to run around and I do a thing called keeping everything honest. That means like if I'm on a pattern of fishing, you know, three quarters of the way backs in creeks. If I'm running to another creek, I'll stop and hit something on the main river for just a minute just to see if something's going out there. So after our two postponed days, you like we had an off day and then like two postponed days. So we had like three days off of the off of the lake. Mm -hmm. So you really had to go out there with a complete open mind and figure out what was happening every single day. And I had on top of that, the water dropped like a foot and a half because of the wind and it's a tidal fishery. So we had like every unknown you could possibly have in bass fishing. We had it going that day. So getting out of there with the top 10, I'm, I was really happy with all the unknown going on that I was able to put a little bit of something together and get out of there with a decent finish. But that was a nerve-wracking tournament. You know, the, the problem with me is my only fear is not making a mistake as far as, like, catching a fish or landing a fish or breaking off. My fear is making a bad decision. And whenever you have all those unknowns going in, you know, going, it's easy to make bad decisions. So I'm really happy that I was able to make decent decisions and get out of there with a good finish. Did you have, a, like, when you were – when you guys did have your practice, was your practice really, were you really successful at your practice or was it really tough? Practice was pretty good for me, actually. I, I, I was pretty dialed in on the first day I got there, like first time I ever saw the St. John's River. I drove down the lake and I saw this small little backwater that was a little bit deeper than the rest. Pull up in there, throw a frog up in some duckweed. I catch two, two and a half pounders. Go to the next one, I catch a five. So I'm like, okay, I run around, I mark a bunch of duckweed, but I don't fish any more of it. So like the second day I go and I, I fish shallow a little bit, skipping a frog around some bushes and docks, and I catch a couple more two-and-a-half-pounders. So, and I didn't fish much at all in practice, really. I was really scouting around because it's such a big, vast place, and you've got to check all the water color and see exactly where it keeps the current and where, you know, the tide really sucks stuff out of. So mm -hmm. it, it's really a place where you want to take in how vast it is. But, yeah, in practice, I was really able to, you know, kind of call my shots and go back in these pockets and catch some fish consistently, and they were pretty good ones, you know, yeah. some two-pound-plus fish, which in Florida – you have a lot of big ones, but the males are really, really small. So catching those two to three pounders is very important in Florida because if you get, you know, an eight pounder, then four one pounders, you don't got that good of a bag, but you got two and a half to back it up. All of a sudden, you're, you know, you're way up there. So practice was real consistent for me, but the tournament, you know, as everybody knows, it kind of went off the rails for everybody. Mm -hmm. How did you get introduced into the outdoors? Did your dad take you fishing when you were younger? Who got you? Who got you started? So my dad's big into the <clears> outdoors, but he, he likes to to deer hunt a lot more. He doesn't fish very much at all. He, like. I don't think he's ever thrown a bait caster to this day, except for maybe a few times. He just, you know, he, he had a boat that was primarily for, for deer hunting. And he took me out fishing in a, a local lake one Tuesday evening, whenever I was probably like eight or nine years old, he took me out and there was a Tuesday night tournament and we, I got to see it blast off. And there was like 30 boats all of a sudden when it clicked at five o'clock, just took off running down the lake. Like everybody's running 65, 70 miles an hour, running their fishing spot and just seeing what they were doing. I was young and it just like opened my eyes to what exactly is bass fishing. So from then until now, I've been completely obsessed with it and go as much as possible. And I absolutely love it every single day. How is this, uh, this whole, <clears throat> you know, you've been a professional fisherman for years, but you never usually have this many days off or this much time 
home. I know you just got married. I think you got married just a little bit before we met. How has yep. how how has this whole virus has? I mean, I guess it's fun to be home, but are you still able, have you been able to get out there and go fishing as much? Yeah, I've been fishing a ton. You know, a, a lot of the lakes around me. I've always traveled a ton in, in like uh, late February to March, April, May. You're always traveling a ton. So this year, I actually got to spend a lot of time on the lakes where I normally don't get. I miss, you know, most of the best bed fishing. I mm-hmm. miss most of the best pre-spawn or the best post-spawn. So this year, I really got to take advantage of that. But don't get me wrong. I would have much rather been traveling around and trying to figure out these big, tough fisheries. But this shutdown should have been a time for me to really get ahead on the social media, you know, do more stuff with the YouTube and get everything in order. But I kind of use this more of a time just to be straight up lazy. And I was just down in, was just down in Destin, Florida for a week, you know, laying on the beach. So I should have used it a little bit more productively, but I just didn't. Are you excited to get back at it? I mean, the next, what's your next, where's the next tournament for the elites? So June 10th is day one on Lake Eufaula. Uh-huh. So, uh, I actually just spent five days in a row on Lake Eufaula right before it went off limits. It went off limits. May the 10th was mm-hmm. the last day we fished there. And I fished the 6th through the 10th straight up graphing because I know it's going to be an offshore offshore deal on that lake. Primarily, it's going to be offshore. Unless the lake comes up and gets stained, you can still win shallow. But for the most part, it's going to be an offshore deal. So that's the problem with this is I'm, I feel like my strong suit as bass fishing is pre-spawn, spawn, and post-spawn. Mm-hmm. And summertime, offshore stuff, I struggle with a little bit more so yeah, tournaments in a row where you kind of got to get out there a little bit deeper and it's going to be it's going to be a little bit more of a struggle than normal but i got the confidence we, we can figure something out did when you go to like you follow do you do you don't do any you don't put a, a rod a, a lure in the water at all you're just simply driving around uh so in <clears> five <throat> days i put like 55 hours on my boat of just that's just straight up while it's crunk and graphing i, I did I can't drive by, but so much shallow grass without yeah. throwing a frog or a jig to it. But I, I tried to graph primarily, but I did have to pull over and skip a frog or skip some docks and stuff. We caught some real, real nice ones, had some, some really nice fish, but I probably only fished uh, two hours max any day. For the most part, I'm out there 12, 13 hours, and I'm graphing 10 or 11 of them. Do, so is frog fishing like your specialty? You've said frog like 15 times. You You like throwing a frog, don't you? This time of year, or any time of year when they're biting it, that's all I can pretty much think about. Like, I could be fishing a 10-boat tournament where I think they're going to be biting a frog, and I can't sleep. <laughs> there's, just something, there's something about skipping that frog way back under a bush and then getting a bite that you can't even see. You pretty much got to – I always tell Hunter, you skip under a bush, and you turn your ear and work your frog because mm-hmm. you got to hear it, not see it. Yeah. There's just something about catching them that way on a big rod, big line that is so much fun for me. So I, we had a question as, as I was doing it. Uh, Mark asked, what rod and reel setup are you using when you're fishing a frog? Okay, so I, <clears throat> I use a little bit longer rod than most people because – so I use a seven foot six heavy fast. It's a point blank blank that I actually build all my rods myself. So I, I, I use a seven foot six point blank than a Shimano Corrado 70 XGS eight to one. I use a little bit longer rod than most people because I am throwing braid. And if you use something like a seven foot rod that just has, you know, a fast tip, whenever you set the hook, only like 20% of that seven foot three rod is loaded. So if that fish makes a fast run or if you get out of position at all, you have no room for error. Mm -hmm. And if I use that seven foot six rod, I've got like four or five feet of line bowed up in that rod. So if that fish runs or something, I just have a little more leeway and I can keep more pressure on that fish for longer. And my style for fishing a frog is whenever I set the hook on a fish, I pull as hard as I can and reel as hard as I can Mm -hmm. until I boat swing them in the boat. So that's, I feel like if you, if you give them time to jump, they, you might lose them, but yeah. if you can sit there and ski them to the boat, swing them in the boat, I got, you know, heavy gauge hooks, big line, nothing's going to fail. I just got to get them in the carpet. Then I can sit there and play around with them and put them in live well. Nice. I like that. Um, <clears throat> have you been, I mean, you, you were, you, you played poker for, for the longest time for years and years. Have right. you, are you still playing any poker or is, is fishing taking over everything? So fishing has definitely taken over almost everything for the past, like two years. But I do still play poker a decent amount on, uh, like, I have a phone app I play on that's, you know, for real money. And then I play on the computer a lot for real money. But, like, right now, everything's shut down. So, yeah. if there was a casino open somewhere, I'd probably be in there. <laughs> We'd be live streaming from a poker table right now. <laughs> I know my dad's missing it. I know my dad's missing it, too. But, but you know, it, it is what it is. Um, so, so you're looking forward to the rest of the, the – you got a great start to start off with. I mean – 
Are you what what place are you going to? Are you the most excited about going fishing? So, you know, I, I think some of those New York lakes like Champlain, Cayuga, the St. Lawrence River is going to kind of be a curveball for me because I'm not really strong as far as smallmouth go, but I do know how to fish current. So that's going to be kind of a we're going to see how that one goes. But Cayuga and Champlain are going to be a lot of largemouth fisheries. And those large those largemouth up there in New York, they bite like nothing I've ever seen before. Like if you get around them, you catch them. It's like the Tennessee River. If you're around the fish, you're going to get them to bite. So I'm excited to go up there and play around on Cayuga or Lake Champlain just see what I can figure out. I've never been to either one of those. And that, that's another thing that I really like. I really like going to lakes I've never been to mm-hmm. and trying to figure it out, you know, in the three days of practice or during the tournament. So I'm looking forward to those two for sure. What about the tournament in November? I mean, how, that's going to be unbelievable. First off, you're going to have – it's going to be cold as hell to start off with. You're going right. to have to – I'm, I'm a little worried about that last tournament for everybody, to be honest. Right. The, the good thing is <clears throat> it's going to be in Texas. So if it was going to be like – Chickamauga or somewhere like that where it really does get really cold in November, uh, it, it would be even worse. But, yes, yeah, it's, it's going to be colder than average. And the thing about that lake is Lake Fork gets beat up worse than probably any lake in the country. So all those fish that are, have came off bed, they're going to get beat up, beat up, beat up until November before they, you know, they're going to, there's not going to be any more major transition yeah. until then. So like in the spring, there's a major transition of them deep to shallow. You can catch them shallow. And November is going to it's just gonna be a tough tournament but hopefully we'll be able to catch some big largemouth there because it is lake fork and there's like a ton of 12 to 14 pounders caught there every year are you a good just uh, just because i'm hearing rumors as i put up air quotes um <clears throat> are you a good uh do you like fishing texas just out of curiosity i've never been to texas <clears throat> never fished in texas really so I, I've, ne- I, I've never fished in texas that i know of yeah I'm hearing rumblings that that's where the classic is going to be next year. I'm down for that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Texas, the, the thing about Texas is if we go to a classic down there in March, they're going to be a little bit further along. So, you know, there'll be a little bit more bed fishing in play than most classics. Most classics are always a pre-spawn deal. So if we go to Texas in March or something like that, which I, I have not heard this rumor at all. So I'm, just I'm, saying, I'm just saying that's. It, you know, there'll be a little more bed fishing going on in that classic if it's in Texas than there usually is. Like on Conroe a couple of years ago, the classic, there was actually some bed fishing happening. So I'd be okay with that. You know, they're up there shallow. They're trying to do their deal. I think I could, you know, pluck a few. But we got to make it to the classic before we really worry about that. Yeah. Well, that's the goal. I mean, the classic angler of the year. I mean, if you had to pick one, if you could say, <clears throat> I'm going to win the Bassmaster Classic in my career with the elites or win angler of the year, what would be more important to you? angler of the year for sure yeah because i mean the classic i'm not trying to take anything away from the classic it's huge but it's only 15 fish yeah like really 15 fish can win you the biggest tournament in the world angler of the year you got to catch a whole bunch more than 15 to, to win that sucker so it just shows that you're a little bit more skilled to win angler of the year so that's my goal 100 percent. i want angler of the year more than anything in the world but you know i'm a rookie now so we got to We'll, we might, we'll work our way up yeah, to that. We'll, uh, after your first, I know when you when you were down here in, in Florida, uh, you it was still, you were still like almost brand, you're still brand new on the elites, but you were brand new with elite sponsorship stuff. When you have such a good tournament, did that does that help you uh, talk to people and get, you know, start to work with other sponsors? It, it does, but it kind of, <clears throat> you know, it all the, all the deals are kind of done in late summer. Yeah. So, as far as like any big corporations, their all their stuff is already going to be full. So I'm not going to see any benefits from that until till later. But you know, I, I did get a lot more you know notoriety and stuff like that. The, the YouTube channel blew up for mm-hmm. a while, and you know, I did get a, a lot more smaller companies that you know you know re- reached out. But as far as like the big mega sponsorships. I won't see anything for that to like the end of the year. So we got fingers crossed for that though. I'm, I'm rooting for a, a big check this year. Yeah. That I I'm looking, I'm looking forward to th- By the way, th- I should get into the YouTube channel. The YouTube channel's great. How long have you been doing this? The, the putting videos out and is it you and your, most of the time I see your, you, your wife in there. And I think, I, I think so. And, and, yeah. uh, but do, do you edit them all yourself? I mean, is it you guys doing it all? So at, at <clears> first it was all me doing it. And then for the past probably four or six months, my wife Hunter's been doing almost all the editing. So um, uh, like she takes care of everything. She makes sure my batteries are charged up and my GoPro. She makes sure everything's plugged up. My SD cards are clear. And then she does all the editing. So 
it's a lot harder. It's easier for me to do the editing because I can remember exactly where I caught the fish. Yeah. And I might give her like a 30 minute clip. And be like, There's a fish in there somewhere. So, <laughs> yeah. so she, she doesn't like when that happens. So what, what I try to do is I'll try to turn the camera off right after I catch a fish. That's what I do so too. Goes right, right. Goes right to the end of the clip and she can find it. But you know, it, it does still kind of help. I might say something, you know, in the middle of a 20 minute clip, I might just say something that would be like a good, you know, verbal transition. And then I, I got to kind of go back and tell her, you know, I, I said this, it'll be a good way to transition from spot to spot or technique to technique. But yeah, she does for the last while, she's been doing almost all the editing. And then for how long I've been doing the YouTube channel, I think I started it in late October or early November of 2018. So I guess like a year and a half now. And I've been really happy with the steady growth. And YouTube is a very different beast than oh. most other social media. Yes. 99% of my <laughs> comments are you know, overwhelmingly positive. You oh know, yeah. My, my wife Hunter does some TikToks and like 99% of her po- comments, not 99, probably like 55% of her comments are like straight haters. Yeah. But the YouTube industry is not like that at all. Like everybody is like, they appreciate you putting out the content. Everybody understands it takes a lot of work and they're really on board with whatever I'm doing. And you know, like the, the YouTube has been huge for me interacting with people interacting with fans. I love talking to people, especially about fishing. I hate to even call them fans because I feel like most of them are like, peers you know but for the most part that's the best part about youtube is how much i can interact i try to reply to as many comments as i possibly can and you know i feel like that goes a long way so yeah i put a lot of effort into youtube glad to see it kind of taking shape now yeah oh no uh, i know i know i know how hard it is for me doing it and how you're you're killing the game on on it It, it's always fun to see not to mention to be honest i think i told your wife after you caught that 10 pound the best my uh, let me go back to st john's my favorite part of the st john's was well there were a few things i mean i got to talk to dave mercer and he and i got to not be hating each other anymore because you know i I opened my I, you I didn't. Know you don't know about that. That which is good. Um, so <laughs> clearing the air with Mercer was great. The second thing was was, man, your wife was so proud of you catching that ten pounder. I remember sitting there and talking to her because I was. I think I, you had to talk to somebody else before you talked to me. Right. And she was crying in joy because of how how happy she was for that day for you and it was like one of the best things i've ever seen in this sport ever in 13 years of doing this right it it just it's a big adrenaline dump because it's like the first day of the tournament is nerve-wracking and the second day of the tournament you still got to catch them but after you know we knew i made it to day three we knew i think the worst i could have possibly done was 20th place yeah so like all the pressure's off 20th place in your first elite's not bad at all no so it was a huge deal where she was super proud that the, the all the work I put in had actually, you know, turned into a positive result because it doesn't matter how much work you put in. A lot of times you don't get the result you might deserve. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes you get a result that you didn't deserve that, you know, was good. So it was just good. She was really happy and relieved that a positive result came out of all this work we had been put into it. So hopefully we'll make her cry eight more times this year. <laughs> <laughs> well, she now you don't want to cry too much. Let's let her cry when you win that angler of the year or the classic or something like that. I, I, I think, well, I, I, like I said, I think you're killing the game with the YouTube channel. Cause I know how hard it is to do it. And, and honestly, after the, after the first day I met you, I came home and uploaded the video overwhelmingly. I mean, overwhelmingly everyone said, go find Kyle for day two. That's and I'm awesome. like, okay, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do another, I'll, I'll find him. You know, let's hope he does. And like I said, you pull out that ten pounder, and you're the person before John was the funniest thing because John came over to me afterwards, and he's sitting there talking to me, and I go, you didn't get the giant bass; it was done before you. And he's like, Kyle got it. I'm like, oh, it's just too funny. <laughs> yeah, that's I, I wasn't aware that uh, John Cox, you know. I knew he had a giant one. I knew it was close to 10 pounds, but I, I didn't know he was upset about it. I, you know, after I weighed in that fish, I was kind of being pulled in every single direction. Yes. Everybody wants to know, you know, what happened that day and how that happened. You know, more than just catching that 10 pounder, I was really proud of the way that day happened because I found that place in practice and I went and ran everything I ran on day one and I didn't catch anything. So I was riding, I left like an hour and a half early because I was like, I got to hit this one spot where I think I can catch a couple of keepers off of. I go in there and I lose a four pounder. Then I catch a three and a half. Oh yeah. Then I catch a ten. So making that adjustment 
on the water that day and figuring out what they you know wanted for that day i was you know very proud of that because that's the decision that i made that worked out the 10 pounder is just a it's a great bonus and all that stuff but i was really proud of the decision that i made to to adjust and change and relocate i, I drove like 40 miles yeah. back and then you know put up in that little aqua baja whatever it's called river and then caught, you know, most of my fish for that day. So making that adjustment, I'm super proud of that. Did you make an adjustment with baits too? Was there something that you noticed in the, that water or something was happening and you just said, did they want a slower presentation? Did they want something chunkier? Was there something that happened that made you do it there? So I, I think what happened was uh, there, there was a wave of fish that had pulled up to spawn. Uh -huh. And that was at a down on the south end, like all the way down below like Lake Dexter. They're a little bit further along. Yeah. So I moved, I moved way up closer to the to the launch, closer to Palatka, and then I think the fish were a lot more pre-spawn at that time. Mm -hmm. So I, I used the exact same bait, the exact same – well, not the exact same pattern because I did run a little bit different pattern, but I used the exact same bait because them pre-spawn fish like to pull up under those mats, and I was using an ounce and a half weight to punch in there and catch them. So I didn't change baits, but I, you know, I changed locations and found that the fish were in a different stage. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Well, I don't want to keep you from fishing because, quite honestly, I'm looking behind you like that, like dock. Oh my gosh, you had like all that structure under right. under. I got my my buddy up there throwing a whopper puffer right now, trying to. Is he, he's salty? So that six pounder was awesome. We, we saw it swimming down the bank, and I told him, I said, "Look, man, a, I, I call it a four pounder because I don't know how." Bad it was. I said that bush. So I threw to the other side of the bush because I knew that's the way the fish was going. I twitched that frog twice. That fish came out, came unglued on it. One of the coolest bites I've ever seen in my life. It was so awesome. And now he wants to catch him one on top water so bad. He, he was glad I got on the phone because he, <laughs> he got the front. He, make sure he doesn't do little circles with the trolling motor. Just tell him not to just keep it straight down the bank. <laughs> right. Hunter, Hunter will do them circles in a hurry. <laughs> Dude, I really appreciate the time today. Thank you very much. Please tell your wife I said hello. Uh, everyone needs to go check out his, his channel and YouTube uh, and Facebook. It's Kyle Welcher Fishing. Uh, you can go kylewelcherfishing.com too, I think, correct? Yes, I have one. But yeah, so YouTube, Kyle Welcher, Instagram and Facebook, Kyle Welcher Fishing. And I do have a website, but uh, I appreciate you having me on, man. We, we got to catch us up again. We got to do this again soon, please. No problem. No problem. Anytime. Every, okay. I tell everyone I said hello, and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you, brother. See you, man. Later, bro. There is the man. Crapola. Why does it do that? Kyle Welcher. Make sure you go to his channel, kylewelcherfishing.com. Go to his YouTube channel and his Facebook page. Show him some love, and go subscribe and watch some of the great videos that he puts out. You can't beat a, a more... <clears throat> Um, in all honesty, the guy has so much energy and there's, he has just, he's just real. It's like, um, it's, I, I'm trying to not get these, I mean, he, Kyle's in a, a huge name, but like Todd and all these other people, like our boy, Jason and other people, I want to, my goal is, let me take this off, is to try to get real people on here and let's, let's have a real conversation on everything that's going on. Let's not, I, I'm trying to make this a lot more entertaining and, and really, to be quite honest, having a little bit more time to talk to people, I think really helps, um, people break down the walls a little bit more than what we can do on the radio show. So I thank Kyle <clears throat> for, uh, for his time and, uh, yeah, super down to earth, uh, and and just the one of the good dudes goods out good dudes out there. We're gonna have um, Monster Bass Rick on here. He had some things that came up, so he couldn't come on today. But we'll try to reschedule that. Hopefully, we hear from him. I should mention, um, I'm gonna do. I'm in the process of doing the ultimate, and by ultimate, I mean the serious ultimate subscription box deal. I'm going to put all of them, I'm going to put four or five up against each other for this month. They include, I just got it yesterday, Warrior Tack, hold on, Warrior Tackle Box. This will go up against Mystery Tackle Box, will go up against Monster Bass, and will go up against one other one, which I don't remember what the name of it is. Um, the other one is named course i can't find it in my email it would it would make oh real tackle box so real tackle box 
And this Warriors tackle box, I've never opened, never had any dealings with at all. So we're gonna we're gonna put four of them up against each other. Maybe there's might be one more too. Four or five of them up against each other, and we're gonna really we're gonna really see which one is the best. Let's let's take a real look at them. What quality products we are? Do they give us full packs? The whole nine yards for one month, and uh, so that's coming up. There's also a bunch of new stuff that we have going on. Some new. Um, some closer looks. You got to see some of them yesterday. I should mention that tomorrow um, these boxes are rated in Steve scale. Well, yeah, we'll rate them. We're going to all rate them, to be honest, Joe. We'll rate them for whatever. They're all bass oriented. I've tried to make sure that they are all priced the same amount. So, like the Monster Bass, I think, is like $32, $30, $32, $32 whatever it is. This this Warriors box was thirty four dollars, and then the real the real tackle box I think was with they charged shipping, which I didn't like, was still in the thirty thirty five dollar range. And the uh, mystery tackle box is the elite box, so I think that one's might be a couple dollars more. But overall, all of them are generally the same amount. We're going to see what what quality products we get and what quality products we don't get. Well, let's I want to let's really look at it. Because quite honestly, I don't want you guys to go spend your money on one that is crap. Like, let's see, let's see which ones are good and which ones are bad. So that one is coming up. There will be a closer look video sent up tomorrow of the Salmo. What is it called? Of the Salmo replicant bluegill. There's the big one. Our schedule for YouTube is going to change starting this week. It used to be Monday, Friday, and then this video. From now on, it's going to be Monday, this on Wednesday, Thursday morning, or Thursday afternoon will be a closer look or a fishing video. So it'll be, it, whatever it's going to be, it's going to be Monday, Thursday, Saturday from now on. Uh, to be honest, Jason, I'm partial to one too, the same one that you're partial to. That's the truth. And I, I, I know I know what's in the Monster Bass one, and we've I did the Monster Bass opening, but I'm going to compare that one to the other ones. And, um, I mean, Monster Bass puts out arguably one of the best boxes in here. Now, I said I wasn't going to com compare this one to the Florida Tackle Club one only because I didn't feel like it was fair to put the Florida Tackle Club one in because that is based for me. That is a custom box designed exactly for me so i'm not going to put up the florida tackle box against the the other ones because i just don't think that's fair because the florida tackle one always comes in and it's everything i'm using so i'm going to be happy with everything that's in there these ones i'm not sure what i'm going to get um i'm not sure what comes in the mystery tackle box i'm not even sure what's in this warrior tackle box or the real tackle box i don't know what's in them so we'll we'll let we'll do a comparison and we'll see which one we think is better because if you're going to buy one or give one as a gift which is in most cases what you do which would be the one that you should spend your money on. So we're going to look at that a little bit better detail. So tomorrow there will be a closer look and there will be a of course Saturday there'll be another closer look. Saturday morning at 9 I'm going to upload the new uh, shad replicant shad for salmo so you'll get three of the replicant shads and then we'll start the new cycle of monday thursday and in saturday from here on out man a good interview from kyle guys i really appreciate y'all coming on here i appreciate you all uh, participating and uh just you know showing the love make sure you go to kyle's youtube channel and subscribe i will put this on our youtube channel just after this so go there and check it out and uh, we, I'm starting to do our our box to 5,000. That's what I'm doing. So if you have friends, tell them about the channel because I'm telling you that box. It only, only even though it only has three lures in it right now. This is going to be what I call the ultimate crankbait box. I'm going to fill it up with crankbaits, and this is one of the things. Look, you can see all my new lights. This is going to be one of the things that I give away at 5,000 subscribers. So, and not to mention, he had a fish on there too, you're right. With a six pound surprise. Thank you, Jason. Everyone check out Jason's channel too. Jason Beck Fishing. So, 
I always say something nice about you, Jimmy. I always say something nice. I say nice everything nice about everyone. There's only a few people I talk crap about. And then when I talk crap about them, they kill me for it. Just joking. Just joking. Anyway, guys, uh, next week, live from the Casa, we'll be in, this is German, or this is German. There'll be some new things. And we got a whole bunch of new stuff coming out for the channel. Wait till you see some of the uh, the new stuff that's coming out. Um so uh, it should be good. How do I like these boxes? I like, uh, truthful, truth be told, I'm not a humongous fan of that one. That one uh, kind of is, it's really hard to get the crankbaits in. I don't know why. I will say I use the Terminal Tackle one all the time. I love the Terminal Tackle one. Nips, it's time for you to know another prize pack. You can email us and we'll get get it. So you, want, oh, you want to know what we'll do? I have those Costas. I have six pairs of Diego's sitting over there. So at the next live from the Casa, I'll put this on the YouTube channel. Just go comment that you want you want to win one of the pairs. The next live from the Casa, I'll do a giveaway for one of the Costa Diego sunglasses. Because there's six or seven or eight over there. I don't even know how many there's over there. There's a bunch over there. You know, there's a bunch. Guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for being part of the family. I hope you guys are safe, happy, healthy. I hope you're able to go fishing. Let's say a few. We're never giving away the whiteboard hammer. In fact, I'm ordering a whiteboard and bringing it over to your house. <laughs> Actually, until you have that snake population gone, I'm never coming over to the house. I can't, I, that house and the rattlesnakes you got going on over there, that, that freaks me out. Freaks me out. Anyway, I hope you guys are happy, healthy. I hope God is blessing you. I hope you're you're able to spend some good time with your family and able to go fishing, most importantly. But remember a few things, okay? Hammer time. Take a kid fishing. Get your fish on. We will see you guys soon. Cheers, guys.